Hello everybody and welcome to Anexus TV. This is Kainite and here we have Irinus versus Anexus live from the Prague Challenge, obviously in Prague in the Czech Republic. So this is going to be Anexus's fourth game. Obviously their third game is also on Mirage. Their fourth game is also going to be on Mirage, so why not? And we're also going to have the pistol round. Irinus won the knife round and they chose to stay as the counter terrorists. So let's see what they can make of it as well as what Anexus can make make of it. So it looks like Lucas is going to be playing B with Bordel, so a 2-1-2 two, two split, but it looks like the terrorists are going to try and make their way A. So let's have a look at what Hudge G is going to do as he tries to push mid here with his Glock. We've already spotted one of the CTs, because the T's will start pushing now. Shots being fired left, right and centre. Pushing CT spawn, trying to take down that CT. Hiding behind the boxes, and the CTs will start to rotate. MX with the first kill of the round. Jiri returns a favour. Ice kills MX, Hoods G onto the head of Jiri, and it's 3 on 3 now, the bomb does have to go down, 59 seconds remaining, and Rattlesnake will plant the bomb after a very, very nice headshot onto Ice. So, 3 versus 2 in favour of the terrorists, namely Anexis. Bordel knows exactly where Hoods G is, takes him down, he's going to start to push, he's been flashed, he knows where the other terrorist is, no he doesn't. 2 versus 2 now, 2 versus 1, Lucas takes down Rattlesnake. Now it's going to be, it's all down to release, all down to Lucas for eeriness, so he fakes the defuse, he's going to get pushed by release, Lucas takes him down, very good shot there by Lucas, does he have enough time to defuse the bomb, I'll tell you what, that's going to be a close one, but he'll get it in the end, yeah, my prediction there was correct, and it's going to be 1-0 to the home side, the home side mainly because they are from the Czech Republic, and obviously this is the Prague challenge, so probably not the start and exit had in mind, Mirage as a whole used to be known as the CPL Strike on Counter-Strike Source. Pretty sure it was known as the same thing on 1.6 as well. Apparently they had to change the name due to licensing issues or something along those lines. So let's see what's going to happen here. It looks like we're going to have a, an underground push from the Nexus side. Making their way up mid and probably into the A-bomb site through mid. But Nesic has popped up in mid. So he'll either get a spray down or he'll probably get taken down by an Exis. Good made there by the Eeriness player so far. It's a very, very slow round. Not much to comment on. Just waiting. See, he will make the first move. Nessage makes the first move onto Rattlesnake with his FAMAS. And Nessage is being shot left, right, and center from 360 degrees. Down goes the final Nexus player, Hoods G. So, uh, not a very successful eco round there for the Brits. Could probably roughly tell what they wanted to do, but unfortunately for them, they were probably a little bit too slow, or or they quite simply got caught out. Eeriness played rather aggro, knowing they obviously have the guns. They won the pistol round. Which obviously gave them a financial advantage. Anyways, release pushes mid, takes down Nessic with a very nice shot there. He is on HP himself, so he is hurt. It's almost a, a death for both sides there. But anyways, Irinus find themselves one man down. Rattlesnake. We've seen him pull off quite a few nice AK shots throughout this whole tournament. So let's see what he can do. Not only for the remainder of this round, but for the remainder of the game. So far, Jiri top fragging for his side and Rattlesnake. And Hoods G on level terms for an Exis. Rattlesnake peeking into that A bomb site. Looks like MX is gonna try and. Oh no, Rattlesnake is gonna boost MX into apps, and obviously that is a boost that uh, is utilized by a lot of teams. Lucas playing rather ninja at the B bomb site, and so far so quiet. An Exis trying to not give much away. Bordle kills, release, and he's short. Uzi making his way into the A bomb site, obviously. I think he would want to wait for some of his teammates, and that is why he shouldn't have gone in by himself. Jiri took him down. MX going big with two. Well done, MX. Turned this four versus two into a two versus two, and that is the quality these players possess. And that is why you can't give players like MX an AK-47. But anyways, two on two now. Bordel will throw that flash into the bomb site. Ends up flashing himself, but um, he's still going strong. Looking for that last terrorist. Rattlesnake takes him down. One more terrorist to go. Can Lucas pull this one off? Being shot from the left, he's being shot from the right, he's surrounded, can he do it? He takes down Rattlesnake, can he take down MX as well? He's going to start defusing, 3, 2, 1, 
And MX there just in the nick of time. The bomb will go off. MX falls to his death, but he doesn't care. He's a suicide bomber. He wants that bomb to go off after it's planted. That is the aim for the terrorists. He won't mind having one death on the scoreboard. Counter-Strike Source, or not Counter-Strike Source, Counter-Strike Global Offensive is a team game. And anyway, so far, a very, very even match on a very, very even map. So the CTs on their deco. Let's Dance takes down Hoods G, sat in a surprising position. Let's Dance with two. Can he get the third? He does! Let's Dance with a three man with that little shotgun of his. Good, well played, but Husey and Rattlesnake even out the numbers using their AKs. And now, despite Ice Dance having an AK, he is unfortunately on 29 HP. It's Rattlesnake and Husey versus Lucas and Ice. So Lucas playing the B-bomb site, because obviously there are two bomb sites on this map, even though we haven't seen much of the B-bomb site so far. Husey playing in out towards Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake... Looks like he's going to try and push onto this A-bomb site through mid. So Ice probably playing it smart. He's got his eye on apps, playing from CT spawn. What that'll allow him to do is fall back just in case he is pushed. He has spotted Husey though, so we'll most likely see Lucas rotating. And yes, that is what we're seeing. So Lucas rotating through mid connector as the push onto the A-bomb site begins. Now, what can Anexis do here? Snake, I think, knows exactly where one of the CTs is. Spots another one. Can he take him down? All he can see is the top of his head. No, he cannot. But the good thing now is that the Nexus knows exactly where he is. The bomb still has to go down, though. Ten seconds. Rattlesnake has just realised. Nine seconds to go. The bomb is going to have to go down. I think we're going to see Ice push Rattlesnake now. But he's too slow. He can't take Rattlesnake down. And the bomb is down. Rattlesnake takes Ice down. Lucas returns the favour. And... Um, I never realised Lucas took release down, and uh, there's the diffuse. So it's going to be 3-1 to Eeriness on home soil, of course. Well played by Lucas. Two kills this round. And a defuse, so I'm sure he won't complain. So Ice with six kills and three deaths, topping the scoreboard for Eeriness. Um, not wearing a tag for whatever reason, but uh, but yeah. And Rattlesnake topping the scoreboard for an Exis with five kills and four deaths. So 3-1 so far. Looks like we're seeing a, a, a deco, or it's more of an eco from an Exus. Let's see how they're going to set up. Looks like they're going to go for a quick B push. So let's go and take a look at what Lucas is doing. He is obviously the B player. He throws that nade into Apt. Looks like he's going to progress. Bordel obviously also playing B. As Erin is opting for the 2 1 2 split. We know Hudson keys there. Lucas doesn't. MX Underground, so we could see an apps boost as well. Hoods G and Lucas right in front of each other. Funnily enough, Hoods G fired a random bullet and dealt a bit of damage to Lucas. Now MX and Hughes and released at mid. So, so far we can't really tell what an Exus are trying to do. I think probably waiting for the Czech, Czech Republicans to possibly make a mistake, try and get a kill and grab a gun at least, before they start pushing into a bomb site. Rattlesnake is pretty much hurt. He's going to push into apps. None of the CTs spotted him, so that's quite poor from the CTs. It's quite slow so far, but anyways, Jiri spots Husey. Nessage for the first kill. Jiri gets two in a row. MX and Rattlesnake get dropped. Lucas takes down Hudge G at B. And now it's all down to release him and this pistol of his. So he's going to get pushed from apps, and down he goes. Jiri with his third of the round. Big round by Jiri, very well played by Jiri so far. And Inexis, to be fully honest, find themselves in a lot of trouble. 4 1 down here on D Mirage at the Prague Challenge. Can they turn it around? Well, we've seen them a few rounds down before in the three previous games where without a doubt they haven't been at their best. And they have managed to turn it round to turn it round. So uh, so yeah, let's just wait and see what happens. Rattlesnake knows where one of the counter-terrorists are on that short connector at mid. It looks like Anexus is preparing for an A push. Rattlesnake just causing problems at mid. Lucas is going to have no one to deal with really. So let's just 
And Nexus is quite slow so far, Mirage. Release with the first kill onto Jiri. Rattlesnake with the second. Where's this going on? They've pushed the A bomb site. Release making his way onto the A bomb site now. Shooting through the boxes, trying to catch any hiding counter terrorists. Let's have a look at one of the CTs who's rotating. Ice is stuck, but Nessage is making his way through mid. He's uh, encountered release. Uh, but is encountered Rattlesnake, sorry, and Rattlesnake with two, mixing up release and Rattlesnake there, but he's not going to get, he's going to grab two kills with that AK-47 of his, and he'll think Ice is going to run away to the B-bomb site, he is, he's, run, he's running away to the B-bomb site, and he's going to look to save this up, the big green gun obviously, the gun that many, many Counter-Strike players have grown up to fear, one bullet, to the head and you're dead, but that applies with the lava guns. A special thing about the AWP is that one bullet anywhere by your legs means a kill. And even if you do get hit in the legs, well, one more bullet and uh, you're off to hell. So anyways, 4-2 and Exis got that round that we were talking about previously. We said they needed to pull a comeback out of the bag and by gum they did. So 4-2 and it looks like you're going to see another raid push from Nexus. They are playing this very, very slow, which can affect, which obviously does affect the tempo of the game. Release, however, playing re relatively fast. He's going to get pushed by one of the CTs in apps. However, I think that flash blinds both of them. MX takes down Jiri Nessage onto MX with the FAMAS. Release drops down and will plant the bomb. The smokes are deployed on the bomb site, so they can't quite spot him. Release will throw that nade, and I think that will do a lot of damage. It does ice now left on 3 HP. 4 versus 4, make that 4 versus 3. Husey takes down Nessage, boom, with a nice grenade. Lucas, Bordel, and Ice now the only CTs alive for the Czech Republic. And so Release still holding the A bomb site. Let's have a look at what someone else is doing. Husey playing under apps. Ice looks like he's fallen back to save his orc. Bordel is also falling back to save his M4. And well, Irin has decided not to go for the 3 versus 4. Ice was very heavy tagged. Some would argue it was a good decision, others would have probably gone for it, but um, that's the choice Eerinus made, so I guess we're just going to have to wait now and see whether it was the right choice in the long run. So, talking about combats, it's 4-3. So, well played Nexus, pulling this comeback off, but it's not complete just yet. And obviously the game isn't complete, Nexus could go 10-4 up and still lose this game, and that is the beauty of Counter-Strike, anything can happen. And I think... We could be seeing a B fake now from Anexus. Reason being, Rattlesnake has the bomb at mid. However, he's peeking, so if they spot him, that could be part of the plan. So, uh, he gets hit with that nade. He's going to peek. Spots no one. We obviously know someone's there. He doesn't. All he has to do is shoot through the box. I just hope he can't hear us. Anyways, so ice up in mid for the CTs. And taken down by release. What a shot! Well played, Release, and that's why you can't give Release an AK-47. And it looks like NX is going to push Lucas now. Jiri takes down Rattlesnake, but Hudge G returns a favour. Three on two now. Hudge G playing himself at B, unfortunately with no bomb. However, Husey does have the bomb, so he's going to make his way to the B bomb site through underground. And we know that a CT is there. He's not going to make his way through underground, but I'll tell you what, that CT in underground definitely heard him now. So Bordel playing here in apps. Nessich. Probably didn't hear Husey actually, otherwise he probably would have followed him. He's playing it safe. Jiri on short. So Hudji at the moment. Picking up that bomb that Husey dropped him. And he is going to plant. So Bordel takes down Husey. It's Hudji all by himself now. Takes down Bordel. Can he pull this 3 versus 1 clutch? He's being pushed from many different directions. And the good teamwork by Eerinus. Down went Hudji. And it's going to be 5-3 to the home side. So, so far, so good for the home side. And Nexus not playing too badly either. It's a 50-50 map, really. Probably slightly more CT-sided, some would argue. I guess some would argue it's slightly more T-sided. A bit similar to Divas 2. Many teams argue it's more CT-sided, whilst uh, others argue it's more T-sided. Funnily enough, it seems, the opinion seems to vary depending on where you are in the world. But anyways, that's irrelevant for now. Let's see what's going to happen here then. So uh, both teams on a buy round. MX making his way up towards apps. Towards that A bomb site. So I think we're going to see an A push. Release as well. Along with MX. And hang on a second. What have we got here? We've got a Molotov. It's not very often we see him using competitive play. But 
Release probably knows what he's doing as he throws it down. Will no Jiri takes him down. MX takes down Jiri. Fusey and Rattlesnake with two quick kills onto Nessich and Bordel. And now this push has begun. Lucas and Ice, the only CTs left for eeriness. As the bomb will go down on this A bomb site. You see rounds go so slow for an exit, and then all of a sudden they just jump on you. They jump on the A bomb site and they explode on you and do what we just saw. Just there, so Rattlesnake will take down Lucas. Rattlesnake, I'll tell you what, lovely shot by his AK-47. He's been very good with his AK-47. We haven't seen him AWP in much. He is obviously known in the Counter-Strike world for his world-famous AWP, particularly in Source, and I think he knows exactly where Ice is coming from. Takes him down, well played, Rattlesnake. The captain of the team, obviously, getting the job done. And 5-4 and Nexus. So, I'm not quite sure what the significance of releases Molotov was there. But uh, it got the job done in the end, so uh, even though it cost an arm and a leg, it won the round, so so why not? I think the main reason he threw that, I'm not a Counter-Strike expert, is to basically scare the counter-terrorists and make him uh, fall back. But anyways, we're seeing a deco from the CTs here. So let's track Nessic with this fancy shotgun of his. Ice takes down Hug G with a pistol. MX onto Ice. Release takes down Jiri. And Nessic will probably fall to his death now after that nade explodes all over him. Blue can take down Rattlesnake. Nessic still stuck in CT spawn with that shotgun. UZ finishes him off. And Bordel is the only CT left alive. Quick rounds by, by uh, Anexis. I like it. With Bordel, they've heard him. And down he will go. No, he won't actually. He's picked up that AK. Can he take Rattlesnake down? He can. But MX is there to cover for his defeated captain. And it is 5-5. So uh, the comeback is almost on. Very, very close game so far. Irinus won the pistol round that gave them a few rounds advantage, but now Anexis have their hands on real weapons. We're starting to see what we've all become accustomed to see from this Anexis lineup, obviously, consisting of Rattlesnake, QZ, Hudge G, Release, and MXAX, Digny Cast players, and X Epsilon players, and X MTW players. I don't think any of them need. Any introduction, Husey there, that's the third kill of the round, can we make it four? Nesic is the only CT left alive now, with uh, this fancy shotgun of his, as he's hiding on the A-bomb site. Like a bit of a ninja, can he take Husey down? No he cannot. Didn't work in his favour though, he sort of popped out, and uh, unfortunately for him, MX was right in his face. So, the comeback has been completed, but anything can change now. So, 6-5 to the Brits, here on DE Mirage in the Prague Challenge. So let's have a look at the scoreboard. Jiri still topping it for his team, nine kills, eight deaths. We have seen uh, some very nice shots by Jiri, as we said, mainly using his M4. Rattlesnake still topping the scoreboard for an Nexus. MX and Husey not too far behind. Hoods G, however, along with release in a negative KD ratio. But again, it's a team game. Release drops Lucas after Lucas Drop releases teammate Hoods G. The bomb is going to go down. It's probably the first proper beat push we've seen from an Exus in a very long time. Bordel has an AWP, but I think he'll struggle to uh, try and retake the bomb site with an AWP. That's the problem with, with, with AWPs. It's always very hard to retake bomb sites when you've got AWPs. Down goes Bordel with a due to release his nade. MX takes down Nessie. Jiri and Ice have actually pushed in and evened it out now. So two versus two. They know where one of the T's is, namely MX, Fusey as well. MX takes down Ice, and it's all down to Jiri, the top fragger for Irin is probably their better player so far. He spots Fuse, takes him down. Can he take MX down now? Can he? He's hurt him hard. Yes, he can. Well played, Jiri. But he has no defuse kit, and he's going to have to fall back. Unlucky Jiri. He's definitely been Irin. This is man of the match so far. He got three kills that round. Pulled the two versus one clutch off, but didn't have the defuse kit that defused the bomb. And unfortunately for him, that's why the defuse kit is so important. You know, you can kill all the terrorists, but if they've got the bomb down and you can't defuse it, well, you're going to lose the round anyway. So, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So we're seeing a deco now from the CTs. Let's watch Jiri. has played very well, so he probably grab a, a kill. Actually, I spoke too soon. Uzi took him down. MX spots one of the CTs on short. They probably realize by now that it is a deco from the counter terrorist so on paper we should really see an Nexus win this one Hoods G preparing in the upper apps area throws that nade won't be damaged to anybody we've got Hughes and MX take down Ice and Nessich as they push on this A-bomb site we're seeing we're seeing quiet rounds from an Nexus but 
before you know it, they just explode all over the bomb sites and uh, take down every living counter terrorist they see. But hopefully, we'll see something similar from Eriness once they're the terrorists. So, Lucas and Bordel now. Bordel takes down MX, making it four versus two. There's Bordel. Gonna pick up that AK 47. However, he has been spotted by release and will run away. So, Lucas on 14 HP. Bordel on 33 HP. Lucas probably gonna get pushed now. And down he goes. So Bordel picked up an AK. He's probably going to save it. Probably the uh, smart choice. He's going to get pushed by Rattlesnake. Well, he can't take him down. And Rattlesnake with a lovely shot onto Bordel. Down he goes. 8-5. Now, things are getting interesting here on D Mirage at the Prague Challenge. Obviously, this is Anexus's and Erinus's Both their fourth games. Obviously... Obviously, the fact that they're in their fourth game means that they obviously emerge victorious in all their previous three games. So, this is a best of three. I do believe the next map will be Nuke, for those who aren't aware. I'm not quite sure how they decided on the fact that it would be Nuke, but it is going to be Nuke. So, so yeah, anyways, it looks like we're going to see a B push now. Obviously, we haven't seen many B pushes so far. Actually, it could be a fake release. Sneaking into that B apps area. Can actually cause problems for the CTs if they do decide to push. Now we can see Bordel there. Release obviously doesn't know he's there. I think Release can hear him. MX is making his way from underground. Let's see what Release is going to do here. I've got my eye on him. I think he can grab a kill here. No, he can't. That's quite poor from Release, to be fully honest. Especially when you consider what we've uh, come accustomed to seeing from him. Looks like the rest of the T's are going to make their way into the B bomb site. Release playing it a bit slow now. Come on, Release. I'm going to move on. Anyways, back to the other guys. So, Hugs G and the rest of the boys making their way towards B. Rattlesnake drops loose. A beautiful shot by Rattlesnake, as usual. He's just popping heads at the moment with his AK 47s. MX takes down Bordel. And now, 3 versus 3. But an Exis hurts. Rattlesnake on 7. HP, Husey on 13. Hugs G on 28. So, anything can happen. What's important now, though, is the bomb goes down. So, Rattlesnake is all by himself, actually. The rest of his teammates went down to the M4s of. Eeriness. So Rattlesnake is going to try and plant. It fell right into the trap of Eeriness. And Jiri took him down. Bye bye Rattlesnake and 8-6. And can Eeriness produce a comeback now? Well, on, on paper they can't because it's MR15. And for those of you guys who aren't familiar with MR15, that means max round 15. Which means every half in this game is going to be is going to consist of 15 rounds. So uh, technically 8 plus 7 is 15. Um, so uh, after this round we're going to see a half swap means that Irinus can't beat Inexus's tally of 8. But I think Inexus will be disappointed, to be fully honest. But anyways, Rattlesnake has been tagged after he tried to do a quick orc push onto A, but it looks like we're going to see a, uh, a mid A split from Inexus Bordel. Encountering some resistance at mid, but he's going to fall back and play it cool. Lucas playing B by himself. And so far... We've seen what we've got used to seeing from a Nexus. Molotov onto Bordel. Doesn't deal any damage, but it definitely keeps him off short. Prevents him from being able to push and flank the terrorists at mid. His G boosts release into app. So let's go see what release is off to do. He hasn't jumped into apps just yet. Very, very slow from a Nexus so far. Down goes release. The CTs were anticipating it. They dropped him. That's three T's down. Rattlesnake all by himself. Bye bye Rattlesnake. He gets killed by Jiri. So well played by Jiri. Add 8 7 to Irinus as they increase their tally to 7 in this first half. So whoever wins this game will obviously have to win the next map to progress in the tournament. If they don't win the next map, then we're going to have a third and decide a map with it being a best of three game. So I'm not quite sure what the third map would be. The decider map, obviously, assuming Anexus win this one, for example, and Eeriness win on Nuke. I'm not quite sure what the third map will be, but I think it will be something it will be something standard like Deedles 2 or Inferno. But anyway, let's have a look at what's going on. Let's have a look at how the Nexus CT lineup varies from how Eeriness were playing. Funnily enough, it's quite similar. We're still seeing the same 2-1-2 split. Um, it's more of a 2-2-2 two, two, two split because Rattlesnake was playing short with Hughes. He was playing A, sorry, with Husey, but now he has fallen back to mid. So it looks like we're going to see an A push from the Czechs, Czech Republicans. They prepare 
push this A bomb site now with their glocks. Pistols going left, right, and center. Smoke's dispersed all over the map. And as Ice starts pushing, Yuzi has been spotted trying to jump on top of the boxes. No kills just yet, and there is the opening kill of the round. Lucas takes down Rattlesnake. Now, what can we see now? The bomb has gone down. And uh, the T's are just suppressing an Exis all the, all, all, uh, uh, at the moment. And the flash goes in. We could see an Nexus push to try and retake the bo this bomb site now. However, they are surrounded. Nice. We can see him shooting that Glock Lucas with his second for the round. And it's now Husey left alive. He took down Lucas and Nessich. Well played by Husey, but it wasn't enough. And Eeriness, well, talking about comebacks, they produced one of their own. It's 8 8 so far. And still anybody's game. We see Eeriness, that's two pistol rounds they've won in this game so far. So, on paper, when you give away a pistol round, you should technically you technically give away another round because you should have better weapons than your opposition, if that makes sense. Well, those of you guys who are familiar with how the economy works on Counter-Strike will uh, understand what I'm talking about. But anyways, Bordel with his fa with his, uh, with his FAMAS, with his Galil, lovely shot onto an Exis. Onto MX <laughs> there. Onto an Exis. Oh, oh dear. Anyways, Bordel playing mid by himself. It looks like the rest of the T's have made their way towards B. Release heavy tags. However, he will drop Lucas. Very nice shot. We've seen some good headshots so far in this half. And uh, good nade by by uh, Ice. And now it leaves Rattlesnake, Hughes, and Hoods G alone on this map. So three vs four, Rattlesnake. What's Rattlesnake going to do? Is he just going to play Ninja or is he going to push? Actually, he pushed at the wrong time and Jiri dropped him. And now it's all down to Hughes and Hoods G. So there we have it. The bomb has been planted. Down goes Bordel trying to flank an Exus from behind. And I think we're going to see Hughesy pick up that Galil and save. So why not? Not a bad decision. The bomb is ticking. I'm not quite sure what Hoods G is trying to save, to be fully honest. But then again, he's not really going to infiltrate and defuse the whole bomb. Inf infiltrate the bomb site and defuse the bomb all by himself with that little pistol. Well, he could do. We know how good he is. But uh, I definitely wouldn't be putting any money on it. But, anyways, let's focus again. Erinus 9 and Exus 8. So, uh, not going according to plan for the Brits. I'm pretty sure the uh, Czech Republicans are overjoyed with the score at the moment. So we've seen an, uh, a FAMAS buy from a Nexus. They, uh, they know they have to win a round now on this second half. And they're going to play relatively aggro. Rattlesnake pushes down mid, drops Nessage, so fair play to him. But it looks like we're going to see a B push anyways. Release on the B bomb site drops Lucas. Where are you, Release? Can't find you. Down goes Jiri to release his... Farmhouse once again, so two kills so far for release, and he's totally annihilated Irinus trying to get onto that B bomb site. No one can get onto the B bomb site when released in there. So, what have we seen now from the T's? They're still going to try and make their way into B. Releases tagged on 43 HP. They're still trying to go through the same route. Um, you'd think they would have learnt their lesson by now. Release falling back, playing slightly more defensive. So, let's see what he can do. Playing that angle there. And down goes Bordel, so three for release. Can he make it four? He knows where the other terrorist is. Can release make it four? Ice playing relatively defensive. MX also on the B bomb site to help release out should he require it. Release shooting, but MX got the kill at the end. Well, thanks to a lot of help from release. Almost a four map for release, but uh, I don't think he'll mind. It is a team game, 9-9. Nine, nine. So, Eren has completed the comeback, and now an Nexus start their road to the comeback. So round 19 here, and it's 9-9. Obviously, the first team to get 16 rounds on the board will claim victory in this first map here on D Mirage at the Prague Challenge. So let's take a look at the scoreboard now for the second half. MX actually toppling Rattlesnake, 14 kills to 12 deaths. I only toppling it for the fact that he has two more assists. But anyway, let's concentrate on the game, then we'll concentrate on the scoreboard. Jiri with the first kill onto Rattlesnake onto that A bomb site. He played rather aggro from the apps area and got got the job done, to be fully honest. Anyways, Jiri staying in apps. MX playing short release. Playing relatively aggressive, pushing mid. Will he take down Lucas? No, he won't. That's quite, that's quite disappointing from release. Probably expect better from him. Anyways, it looks like we're going to have an A push. What a shot by Let's Dance there. By, by Ice, sorry. 
down these names. Anyways, Yuzi now is forced to try and retake this bomb site. He's playing it relatively defensive, and it's five versus two. So are we going to see an Nexus even attempt to retake? Deary spots Yuzi. Yuzi takes him down. See you later. But it looks like MX and Yuzi are just going to play this from a distance. They know that they probably can't hit that bomb site and retake it. So they're probably just going to try and take some um, exit frags here and there and try and. Uh, Make sure that some of the terrorists lose some of their AKs, or even better for an Exis, try and pick up some of the terrorists' AKs because obviously the AK 47 is a much better gun than the FAMAS. And the bomb timer increases. But, anyways, going back, oh, hang on a second. Is Ice going to kill MX? MX throws that nade with a flash, and both players don't want to die, so none of them pushing each other. But, anyways, back to the scoreboard MX with 14 kills, 12 deaths. Leading it um, for an Axis, Rattlesnake with 14 kills, 13 deaths, followed by Release, Yuzi, and Hudge G. Hudge G definitely not having the best game of his life, 5 kills for 14 deaths, but uh, I'm sure he'll turn it around. So Jiri, once again, the star player, in my opinion, for Eerinus, pulled off a very nice 2 versus 1 clutch, 19 kills, 11 deaths. So let's take a look at what's happening. So it looks like we're going to see a B-sided push from Eerinus. However, 3 players at mid, so they're definitely taking their time. So this map is... Uh, very small, a lot of close quarters, really. A B push could turn into an A push in uh, you know, a, a click of your fingers. So anyways, 10-9 to Eeriness now. And uh, we're seeing them employ a bit of an Anexus now, Eeriness, taking their time. We're probably going to see a very, very quick push into the bomb site. Now, Nessich sees the leg of Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake is going to have to fall down. You can tell Rattlesnake doesn't normally play B. Made a mistake there. Lucas takes down, release Rattlesnake. They know exactly where he is, but the thing is, they need to take him down. Rattlesnake has an up. Will he go down? He will now. Nessage takes him down. Bye-bye, Rattlesnake. Two versus two. So, Nessage and Bordel against Uzi. And uh, what was MX is now a dead body. So, the bomb is down on B. Uzi holding that shift button, playing it quiet. He's going to make his way through up. So, I don't think they're expecting him to come through there. Uzi knows where some of the T's are, more or less on their positions. He knows at least where Nessage is. Can he get the job done? No, he can't. He's going to fall back. It's quite disappointing. I would have thought that Husey probably would have had the quality to maybe even take that on. But then again, I don't know what an extra finances are like. Let's have a look. Actually, they are hurt pretty much. So, um, uh, probably a good choice by Husey to actually save onto that M4. Because obviously, in Counter-Strike, your money belongs to your team, really. There's not much point one player buying an M4 and the rest of your team being on submachine guns. Well, you know, you, the M4 is going to waste. But anyways, we're seeing a deco. Bar uses M4 so far. And it looks like... Hang on, let's go and have a look at what the CTs are doing. They're pushing up mid, so let's see what Ice can do. It's going to fall back. Oh, it's disappointing. But anyways, CTs falling back onto the A-bomb site. Down goes Rattlesnake to Bordel's AK-47. And let's have a look at this push here then. Bordel... Spots, what I believe is released. I can't quite read it at the moment. Three hours, got my glasses on. Hudge G takes down Bordel with that very nice pistol shot. And Nessage returns a favour onto Hudge G. So four versus three now in favour of Eeriness, in favour of the terrorists. That, that nade is going to be thrown. Release obviously on 6 HP, but the nade, fortunately for him, dodged him. So the bomb will go down. Thanks to Nessage. Lucas takes down MX somewhere else on the map. And gets his second onto Husey. So what can release do with uh, only this pistol and 6 HP? Can we see a, a 4 versus 1 clutch? And maybe we might actually. He takes down Jiri with a lovely shot onto his head. But where uh, Ice had something else up his sleeve. So down went release and 12-9. Oh dear, oh dear. To eeriness. I don't think that was the result everyone was expecting. And uh, an Exis. Starting to smell the bacon, and they're buying everything they can now. They know that they can't give away this first map to Eeriness. So we've got a few pharmacies. We've got Rattlesnake with his orc. Let's have a look at what he's doing at mid. Where is he playing? He's playing. He's playing on top of the boxes. I see. So he will have called now that no terrorists have made their way into mid. Where are the rest of the terrorists? Lucas was playing around at B, but it looks like Nessich has the bomb. So let's go and follow him and see what's going on. Uzi, as you can see there on the right side of the screen, playing relatively aggressive. So. If anyone tries to push connector while well, Husey is in trouble, I mean the player who pushes is in trouble from Husey, and there we have it. Husey took down Lucas, but Husey was dropped himself. So three versus one, Nesic with the bomb being the only terrorist alive. So 
I think he's going to hide. Can't really pull this one off, can he? 16 HP. 48 seconds to go. Making his way through apps. Looks G, however. He is waiting for him. We know that. He doesn't. And no, it doesn't look like he's going to try, even attempt, to push the bomb site. As the clock will continue to tick here on DE Mirage. So I don't think Irinus will really feel too downhearted for giving away that th this round, or the round that is going to finish. He'll obviously still leave him 12-10 ahead. Nessich obviously holding on to that AK, and obviously... AKs are a lot cheaper than M4s, so it's always easier to buy for terrorists. Let's have a look at how Irinus' money is. It should be able to buy AKs. Let's have a look. Uh, it's going to be tight for Lucas and Bordel, actually, but Nessich and Ice both have a lot of money, around $6,000 each, so assuming they drop one of each, one of each one drops an AK for their teammate, then uh, Irinus should be on a buy round, and that is indeed what we're seeing, so... Seen three, no, two going B, the same 2 1 2 setup. Let's have a look at what the terrorists are going to do again. We've seen the same thing from Eriness. It's quite repetitive this map. We're not seeing a lot of stuff done differently. It's just a matter of get on that bomb site, spray the hell out of the boxes, and get the job done, really. It looks like we're going to have an A push now. Actually, it looks like they've fallen back. No, they haven't. Jiri is going to drop down onto that bomb site looking. Actually, he just missed Hook G there, and uh, that miss was uh, led to uh, Jiri having to pay the price as Hook G took him down. Nessage onto Hook G. 3 versus 3. Now NX is spotted, rotating through mid. So, this could be interesting. Who's going to attack first? Who's going to peep first? Both players heavily tagged. Lucas on 36 HP, both Nessage and Bordel on 25. Release is the only player on full HP, so uh, the bomb still hasn't gone down. Nessich will pick that angle and take down Rattlesnake. Good shot there by Nessich. Let's have a look at what Release can do. Oh, he's dropped by Nessich, and we could see. Ooh, MX takes down Ball on. Now it's two versus one. The bomb is going to go down. What can MX do here? Let's have a look. He's spraying those boxes, knowing that the bomb is going down. He heard it, but can he pull this two versus one clutch off now? We saw a very similar situation where Jiri pulled off the clutch. Alright guys, welcome back to Anexis TV. Apologies about that. Um, they had some technical difficulties at the LAN. Um, I believe the server crashed, something along those lines. So, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what the score is, but we'll just carry on as it stands. Because as you can see, they've had to restart. So I believe each team are going to get given around 8,000 coins. Like 8,000 coins, why do I keep saying coins? Anyways... Back to the game here. So uh, we've seen the same 2 1 2 split we've seen before. Not much changing. Both teams, I believe, were on a buy round. So uh, the economy isn't ruined, if you will. Jiri hanging out in the apps area, as we've seen him do quite a bit so far during this entire half as uh, a terrorist for Eriness. Tell you what, that restart completely. Ruin the momentum of the game. Anyways, come on, we want to see some action. Try and uh, put this game back to life. It's G and Rattlesnake preparing for what could be an A push. Release with the first kill onto Lucas. Obviously, we know Lucas just um, plays B by himself. And Release actually is pushed B, so he'll call to his teammates now. There's no one else B. And we are starting to see this A push. Husey. Hitting Hudge G in the face there, not quite sure what he's trying to do. Hughes Murray Husey takes down two. Rattle Snakes drops ice. <laughs> I think Husey panicking a little bit there. Shooting Hudge G in the face, but uh, fortunately for him, Hudge G still survived. So 1 0 Anexis. Not too many rounds to go now. So far, Anexis in the lead, I believe. I think it was 12 10 to Eriness when the server crashed. I think a few rounds may have been played, I'm not quite sure. But it's not the first time we see the server crash here at the Prague Challenge. Let's just hope that we don't see it happening more often. 
Anyways, to try and get back into the momentum of things. Bordel playing mid by himself. Obviously, the, the, the fact that there was a restart completely ruined the economy. Now we see the terrorists who probably would have been able to buy despite losing a round last time have to eat them, unfortunately. So that's going to give the Nexus a huge advantage. Release absolutely demolishing Lucas every time Lucas attempts to go B. So that's a really a cheap death uh, for Irinus. Sometimes having being a man in front, even though if he's on, even if he's on one HP and uh, on paper completely useless, it can uh, be a big mental advantage to your team. But anyways, looks like we're going to see a big push here from Irinus. Irinus message takes down release. MX holding the back of that bomb site. He's being tagged, but he still is on 88 HP and he does have an AK as close to the blocks that the terrorists possess. So Hughes comes from behind to take down Ice. Message drops Rattlesnake. It's two versus one. MX throws that smoke, starts defusing. Jerry takes down Hus G. Can he take down MX? No, he cannot. And uh, very well played by MX. I think it has to be said. And drops Jerry there in the end. Placed that smoke in a very nice strategic place and uh, started a defuse. And to be fully honest, Jerry with a Glock. He knew where the bomb was, but he couldn't do that much damage. And it's 2 0 to an Exis after this. This uh, map crash, restart, server crash, whatever you want to call it. But anyways, we're going to see a push from the terrorist. Oh, gee, I think Orpin, or Auto Sniper in, decided not to shoot when he saw terrorists there. So he was, gee, like we said before, he's not having the best game of his of his career. He still isn't having the best game of his career after the server was restarted. Jiri and Nasich topping the scoreboards for eeriness. But again, obviously all scores were reset. Which is why we're comparing to what the uh, scores were before MX with the first kill of the round onto Lucas at mid. Lucas dying a lot. Um, it has to be said. He's meant to be that player who just goes to the other bomb site just to try and hold back the rotation a little bit. But I'll tell you what, he's not doing a very good job of it. Anyways, Hus G with two kills with his auto sniper. Well played, Hus G. I'll tell you what, I think he heard me saying he was playing poorly. Can he get the third? He's trying to no scope him. The bomb will go down. As the CTs pretty much surround this final counter, this final terrorist, and Huz G does get the nose cut with the auto sniper in the end. Funnily enough, onto the head of Jiri. And well played, Huz G. I'll tell you what, he's played poor during the whole game, but that round by itself makes up for it with the auto sniper. Three kills by Huz G with the auto sniper. Obviously, the auto sniper now, I believe, in CSGO has become. Um, a decent sniper rifle, really. Not probably equivalent to the AWP, but I think it is still using competitive gameplay. Counter Strike Source, if you are spotted using an auto sniper, you just get laughed at. But, anyways, it's a 3 0 to a Nexus, and it's not looking good for Eeriness despite having a good shot by Jiri with the one dig there onto MX at mid. I'll tell you what, you'll be happy with that. And Rattle Snake returns a favour by taking him down. Bordel knows exactly where Rattle is, and he is playing it defensive now. Looks like the rest of the T's are preparing for a B push. Rattlesnake has Lucas in his back pocket, as we've seen so far after this restart. Lucas probably needs to get something on the board. Hoods G with another beautiful auto sniper kill. There's no scoping everywhere. Husey onto Nesic, and now it's just ice all by himself. So, really, I do feel sorry for Eeriness. I, I think the server crash really, in a way, ruined their momentum, has really put them at a disadvantage. It's a bit similar to any sport, really, I would guess, similar to football. You know, if you're playing football as a team and you're passing and you've got your tempo going and then all of a sudden, for example, a foul happens and you have to wait a good two or three minutes. It just completely ruins, ruins the tempo and everything for your team. And the same applies for Counter-Strike. Eerinus were... More or less in the gist of it, playing very well, obviously, probably playing slightly better than a Nexus. And unfortunately, the server crashed. So, so yeah, we're seeing a, a buy round from Irinus. I thought it was a Dika, but I was wrong. Let's see what Ice can do. Is he going to push mid? No, he's not. Looks like we're going to have a quick B push, or at least something more or less B sided from Irinus. Release preparing himself. What did you do with that first auto sniper kill onto Nesic? On the A bomb site, and I think we're going to see Rattlesnake and the rest of the CTs play relatively aggro. They've realised no one is at mid, no one's at A. MX, as we said, played more aggro. He spotted one of the terrorists. Can he take him down? No, he cannot. 
And as they're both running away from each other at the moment, and just looks like Eerinus are really just waiting and doing nothing, trying to draw all of Anexus's grenades out, probably trying to guess how many players are at each bomb site, where the position of every different player are based. And Rattlesnake with that big kill onto Jiri there with that up. Ice is also going to push short. Can Rattlesnake take him down? Jiri deals damage. Ice knows he's surrounded. Rattlesnake with that other kill onto Ice. Now it's all down to Lucas. So what can he do? He's in the apps area here on the B-bomb site. Release knows exactly where he is. He's going to get pushed from behind by Husey. Uh, Lucas is going to push him back. Lucas takes him down. Very nice shot. Spots release. Can't deal enough damage onto him. 37 HP remaining for Lucas. Four versus one now. What can Lucas do here then? Can he pull something out the bag? 20 seconds to go. The bomb is down. Actually, I think Lucas has the bomb. He does have the bomb. He's picked it up. But 17 seconds. I don't think he can make his way onto the bomb site. And now he definitely won't make his way onto the bomb site because he is dead. Thanks to releases M4. So 5 0 so far to Inexus. And I think once Inexus get 5, because I know for a fact they had 10 before the restart. If Inexus grabs 6 rounds, they grab the next round. Then that will leave them with 16, which means it will be a first map victory for the British side here at the Prague Challenge. So, we see a buy round from the Terrace, no one B side surprisingly. So, let's go and have a look at what they're doing. Woods G with another auto sniper kill onto Nessich. I'll tell you what, Woods G should play with that auto sniper more often. Anyways, Rattlesnake pushing mid. Probably realised no one's mid. Now what we need is release to push B, which is what he is going to do. And then they'll realise that no terrorists are actually B. The bomb has been spotted at A anyways. Bordel with that shot onto Hoods. G takes him down. MX and Rattlesnake and Husey with three kills. And now it's all down to Lucas. Takes down MX. Can he get this four versus one clutch? And he encounters Husey. And there are the GGs. And that is full time for this game. And we'll see you guys on map two. On Dean Nuke for this second map of the uh, Prague Challenge. That's the three game between Anexis and Arius. Thanks for watching.